I want to welcome everybody that's uh, joining us now by TV, by radio, by live streaming from all around the world. Welcome into our Sunday morning um, service here at the Shepherd's House. Amen. If you're listening by radio, uh, you can go to the, on our website, www.com theshepherdshouse.net, and you can get the entirety of this program. If you're watching by Facebook, please consider sharing this uh, with your on your timeline uh, with all your friends so that we can get the Word of God out uh, around the world into many more people joining us in our service here in Glasgow, Kentucky, and right between cow pastures out on 6880 in the middle of nowhere. Amen. We're going into Chicago and uh, down in Tennessee and all around the world live streaming and so on. Uh, and uh, down in uh, here in Southern Kentucky area, we praise the Lord for that. I'll be coming with you later in the service today and telling you about our new uh, partnership drive uh, that we've got and what this will be doing uh, and who we're going to be trying to reach. All right, in Matthew chapter number 7, Matthew chapter number 7, very familiar scripture. I'm going to read out the Word of God. Then I'm going to go into Matthew chapter 24, read a little bit of scripture there, and then I want to get into Psalms 119, and I want to read a little bit out of the Word of God. Uh, hopefully this will be a blessing uh, to you. Jesus was talking to the church. Now, uh, the Lord uh, brought the gospel out and sent uh, the news out telling people that you must be born again to make it into the kingdom of heaven. There's people today that says, well, there are many ways now to make it to heaven. Wrong. There's only one way. That's through and by the name of Jesus. That's through the blood of the Lamb. There is no other way to make it to heaven. Amen. Uh, there's different ways you can make it to Louisville. You can go up 31W, 31E, or you can take I-65, but there's only one way to make it to heaven. Amen. And anybody who tries to get up any other way, Jesus said that the same is a thief and a robber. So we need the Word of God, and we need to find the way. And what Jesus was doing while he was here in his teaching, he'd already covered that you must be born again. He'd already established that you got to believe or you're not going to make it to heaven. And then he went to the church and sent the warning out to the church. Just because you attend a church somewhere doesn't mean that you're going to make it to heaven. Just because that you're part of a ministry doesn't mean that you're going to make it to heaven. Just because you're sending money in to an evangelist on television or radio doesn't mean that you're going to make it to heaven. Uh, amen. Listen, there's a lot of people that have been deceived uh, amen, into thinking that they're okay. Amen. The devil came for nothing but to steal and to kill and to destroy. Amen. He's full of lies. He's full of hypocrisy. If we can get to believing in ourselves instead of believing in Jesus, uh, amen, we can be deceived real quickly. If we we can get to believing uh, in an organization, uh, amen, or in a particular church, uh, amen, or a particular preacher, amen, to think that, man, that preacher just hung the moon, uh, amen, the one that hung the moon and threw the stars out into the universe, uh, amen, bled and died on the cross, uh, amen, and he resurrected three days later, and don't you follow anybody else, uh, amen, except Jesus. Uh, he's the only way, amen, to make it to heaven. Uh, there's a lot of people that's all wrapped up, amen, in a lot of different things today, and they're wrapped up, amen, in grandpa's theology. You better be wrapped up in neology, amen, at an altar of prayer, and to learn to pray by your bed, amen, listen, in the bathroom, in the automobile, amen, whenever you get an opportunity, and as often as you can, amen, draw close to God, amen, pray over everything, put your faith and your dependence in him, amen, and cry out to God and say, oh Lord, don't let anybody deceive me because the deceivers are out there today, amen, and they will pull you down, they will pull you under, amen, they will doom your soul, amen, into a devil's hell, and they'll use you up, amen, till you're all used up, 
amen, and then they'll leave you cut dry, amen, and hung high, and they'll move on to somebody else, amen, but you need somebody today, amen, when the going gets tough, amen, he gets right beside you, amen, and helps you through everything, amen, when cancer hits your door, he puts an angel beside your bed, amen, he gives a doctor wisdom and knowledge, amen, to know how to diagnose, amen, and to operate, amen, thank God, he moves on the pharmacist, amen, to give you the right medication, amen, he goes before you, amen, to help you through everything, when you run out of money, amen, there'll be somebody, amen, will come give you some money to get you through the hard time without you begging for it, amen, without you, amen, having to put it on Facebook, everybody that wants to give it to me, give it to me, God's going to make a way, amen, listen, the Lord, amen, wants to move in our lives and allow him, amen, to be number one and he's going to bless, but he had some things, amen, he wanted to say to the church, he wanted to put a warning out, amen, to people that appears to be spiritual, that we think, man, everything is all right between me and God. Now, Brother Jimmy, you ought not to cause people to question your salvation. If I can cause you to question your salvation, you ain't got much. I can tell you that right now, amen, but if you know that you know that you know, amen, you know from your ear to your big toe that you're saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, amen, my preaching, amen, ain't going to cause you to doubt your salvation, amen, but if there's a question today, you better find yourself an altar, amen, because judgment day is coming soon, amen, the judge is getting ready to walk behind the throne, amen, to pass judgment, amen, there's only one heartbeat, amen, between you and I and eternity, and we better know that we're ready to meet God, amen, this is not a game, amen, that we can, amen, clear the checkerboard and set it up again and try it one more time. Honey, when you draw your last breath, you had every opportunity that you'll ever have, amen, to get right with God. Amen, you might think that you're okay, but you better know that you're okay. Amen, what's always blew my mind, amen, is at funeral time. Amen, the preacher'd get up, amen, and try to preach to the congregation and tell them that I've got hope. Amen, my friend here made it to heaven because they smiled a whole lot the last few days that they lived. Honey, they may have had gas. Amen, to put a grin on their face. It might not have been salvation. You better know, amen, that you're born again. Amen, that the spirit and the power of God. Amen, they ain't no preacher. Amen, gonna preach you into heaven. Amen, as a tree falls, so shall it lie. Amen, however you draw your last breath, amen, what condition your heart was in is the way that you're gonna be judged. Amen, there's no purgatory. Amen, for somebody to pray you out of when you slip some money into the priest's hand. Amen, there's no counselor. Amen, gonna meet you around the table. Amen, and ask you if you were sorry. Amen, for the lies you told and the things that you stole and the places you went and the things that you done. And do you have a repentive mind? And if you can go through a six-week counseling session with Peter at the front gate, we'll let you in. Those kind of things are not going to happen. Amen. When we draw our last breath, amen, the next conscious moment you'll know is seeing the face of the great Holy One of Israel. Amen. As he walks up to the throne. Amen. Listen, folks. Amen. To pass judgment upon you and upon me today. Amen. Today is the day of salvation. Amen. You and I don't, boy, I feel like preaching today. You and I don't have, amen, the promise of tomorrow. Amen. They ain't nobody, amen, going to come up. You ain't got a sugar daddy, amen, that's going to buy you out, friend. Amen, you ain't got enough family, amen, that can pray you out of hell. It's going to take the blood, amen, of the Lamb, oh, amen, to cover your blood, your sins. Amen, listen, praise God. Though your sins be as scarlet, they can be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, he can make them white as wool. Hey, glory to God. Amen, I'm glad today, amen, there's somebody, amen, amen, that can pay your way, and he has already, amen, through the blood of the lamb, amen, on the cross, amen, we better know that we're ready to meet God, amen, we better not be hanging on, amen,
amen, to what Grandpa thought about us, amen, and what somebody said. How many times did the preacher, amen, bragged on you? How many times you made it to the altar? Amen, friend, the altar's open in our church. I'd rather see you pray 10 times a week, amen, and know that you're all right with God, amen. But let me tell you, it's not about the times that you went to the altar. It's whether or not you got in contact, amen, with God when you got there. Amen, that's what makes the difference. Amen, whether or not you was repentive. Amen, when you went to the altar in prayer. Amen, there was a warning that went out to the church. Amen, too many times. Amen, down through the years of preachers in America. Amen, is worried more about getting a $52 million jet. Amen, they want to get another ring on their finger. Amen, they want to be able, amen, to get a bigger limousine. Amen, they want a house. Amen, that's as big as a football field. Amen, with a hundred bedrooms. Amen, they want air conditioning in the doghouse. Amen, to keep Fido comfortable. Amen, listen, and the people are dying in Africa. Amen, and the kids, amen, starving to death over there. Amen, I got some pictures of some little ones. Amen, that was barefooted. Listen, folks, I wish I had the money. I'd send more clothes, amen, than they could ever imagine could get to Africa. I'd stay in the post office every day. Amen, sending boxes. I go off and enough now that every one of them knows me by first name. Amen. They're going to soon have my credit card number memorized. Whew. Amen. And I'm going to make more if God will make a way. That's what this whole $25 partnership's about. Amen. I would to goodness. Amen. That some of y'all get the burden. Amen. For them little kids over there. Or Brother Jimmy, how you know that the monies are going to them? Amen. I'm not sending money for one thing. Amen, I'm sending clothes over there. Amen, you understand what I'm saying? I'm sending Bibles over there. I'm sending gospel tracts over there. Amen, I'm giving them the help in a way. Amen, they ain't nobody gonna fight. Amen, over getting clothes unless they need clothes themselves. Amen. I'm very careful about money. Amen. I wish I had more that I could do for them people. Amen. To help them out. Amen. We sent some coloring books. Amen. To 10 orphans the other day. And I know somebody said, well, why in the world did you do that? Because the Lord told me to. And then I got every one of them. I sent them every one a brand new box of crayons and a brand new coloring pages. Amen. For them to color. And to give them some books that had Bible lessons in it. Amen. To send to them kids over there. Amen. Now they got their own crayons and while they're coloring, they're going to say that preacher over there in a place called Glasgow, uh, Kentucky, I think's the name of it, somewhere over in America. I don't know what he looks like except what the pastor here said, but he loved me and he told me about a man by the name of Jesus and Jesus gave me them coloring crayons. Amen. To color the picture here of Moses in the bulrush and I'm reading the story of an old rugged cross and how that somebody named Jesus died. Listen, folks, we need to be getting the word out. Amen, listen in the church. Amen's been lied to. Amen, today we're looking for entertainment. Amen, you want somebody that'll tickle your ears. Amen, somebody that'll make you laugh. I want you to hear me and I want you to hear me good. Amen, today they can get on television and say that I want $52 million for a brand new jet and there'll be enough people across America, amen, he'll wind up getting a hundred million dollars, amen, to get out, amen, and tell lies, put out entertainment, amen, to tickle people's ears, amen, and somebody that's trying to get the gospel out and to feed the poor, if they get 500, it'll cause you to faint, amen, but you can get several million if you're putting a lie out there, amen, listen, for the Bible says, amen, straight is the gate and there is a way, amen, that leadeth unto life in few there be that finds it, amen, but broad is a gate and wide is a way that leads unto destruction and many there be that enters in thereat. Amen. The devil today is producing false prophets. Amen. He's calling five. Amen. Or maybe 50. Amen. To everyone that God's are calling. Amen. And putting them out there. Everybody wants to build a ministry. Get them a jet airplane. Amen. Get them. Amen. A Mercedes Benz to drive and a ring on every finger and tell everybody how you can prosper financially. I'm gonna tell you today, amen, you can keep somebody out of hell, amen, by getting the gospel to them, and I don't care whether you prosper financially or not. 
Amen, and I'm not into this to prosper, amen, financially myself either. Amen, we need the word of God. Amen, we need to know that we're ready to meet God. Whew, I'll finally get to the scripture long after a while. Whew. Amen, the preacher come before I got the scripture read. I feel like he's gonna help through the rest of it too. Amen, Matthew 7, amen, verse number 21. This is Jesus speaking. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, what day is he talking about? The day of judgment is the day they're talking about. Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Again, this is Jesus speaking. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon the rock. Can I stop right there for just a minute? He was liking the rock unto himself. Amen. When you build your house upon the faith you have in God. Amen. Listen, the wind can blow. Amen. The devil can rage. Amen. Outside your cabin's door. Amen. But nothing's going to happen to you because you're building upon the rock. you got a solid foundation. Amen. The devil cannot destroy you even though you have one attack. Amen, right after another, I could spend 15 minutes, amen, telling about the attacks that I've had, amen, in the last 10, 15 years, amen, and the stronger and the greater my ministry is, amen, the worse the attacks, amen, but every attack that I've got, God's made a way out of it. He's building my faith, amen, he's encouraged me to know this too shall pass, glory to God, amen, and I can go on and everything's going to be all right when I put my faith in my trust in him. Amen. Don't amen. settle for the rest when you can follow the best and his name is Jesus. Amen. We need, amen, to know, amen, we can build our faith, amen, upon a rock and the winds can do everything it wants to do, but when the smoke of the battle is cleared, you'll be sitting over in a corner, grinning from ear to ear and say, I can't wait to see how Jesus builds this thing back. Amen. Praise the Lord. We went through a terrible church split uh, several years ago. And I thought, boy, we down to nothing right now. I got this big ministry, this big television program, got this big dead on the church, got a handful of people. Uh, whew, how in the world are we going to do it? And the Lord said, have I not always taken care of you? I said, yeah, Lord, but this is different this time. He said, this is different, but I'm not. Amen. He took me through it. He took us, not me, but all of us. Uh, amen. Through it. It got rough a few times, but God, uh, amen, made a way through everything, stayed on television, stayed on the radio. Uh, amen. Got the church completely paid off. Uh, now we're on television. Uh, amen. Not reaching hundreds, but millions of people. Amen. Through television and radio. Uh, amen. I'm feeling more are coming. Uh, amen. Before long, I'm getting ready to go on the other side of the world next month. Uh, amen. And preach to them over there. Amen. Listen, folks, God's opening up doors. Amen. Listen, we need, amen, to keep our faith and our trust in him. Little as much when God's in it, God will make a way. And when trials comes, amen, know that it's going to be all right. Amen. My wife got hit with shingle, with the shingles this week. Amen. Before that, she uh, thought she'd pull a, a muscle in her neck. Amen. Last year, she had a stroke. Amen, and I told her, I said, it's dangerous to be married to me. <laughs> Amen. 
Amen, because I'm fighting hell and hell's fighting her to get to me. Amen, if it's hitting me, I can deal with it better than I can when it's hitting her. You understand what I'm saying? The devil knows that all too well. Amen, but the same God that brings me out is bringing her out also. Amen, listen, I'm thankful. Amen, that we're not in this. Amen, it's two, but now we have became one flesh. Amen, when the devil's messing with her, he's a-messing with me. And when he's a-messing with me, he's a-drawing attention from heaven, and the Lord's ascending angels down. Amen, listen, it's good to know. Amen, God's got my back. Amen, in everything. Amen, praise the Lord. I reached up one day this last week. This is this is funny. I hurt my back several years ago, and the Lord healed me. And late, uh, lately, I've been out here in the parking lot uh, uh, working and bending over, uh, uh, standing almost on my head part of the time, down on my knees, uh, filling up holes in the parking lot out in the hot bowling sun. Me and Carl uh, done that. He's 72 years old, and I ain't got no sense, and we're the only ones dumb enough to get out there and do that. But it, he's done got old and senile, and I just lost it years ago. <laughs> Here, my son said the other day, he said, hey, y'all ain't got no more sense to get out there. I said, you got to get out there and get it done. When it needs to be done, you can't wait, amen, for a cool, shady day. Amen. So we got out there and got her done. I've been lifting things uh, around here lately. I said, my back, I've lifted more lately than I have in years. Thank God. And I reached up one day this week to tuck the hair under my little short wife's shower cap and pull the muscle on my back. I couldn't hardly, I, I had a terrible day. That's the truth. That actually happened. This is what I told the devil. It was on Tuesday. I said, I know I've got to hurt just like anybody else, and I know I've got to have my part of pain. So I want you to laugh and enjoy it because tomorrow it's going to be better because I'm going to preach tomorrow night, and you ain't holding me back. So I'm just going to tell you, sit back and laugh because I'm going to get the last laugh. Tomorrow it will be better. I got up next day, it was better. I come in here Wednesday night, and y'all couldn't tell I ever had anything pull my back, could you? No, uh-uh. I, I believe I can lift a 80-pound piece a uh, bag of concrete today. Uh, it feels good. Well, Brother Jimmy, what happened? This thing come to test. And I told the devil when I was healed about three years ago, I want you to remember I was healed. And I know this is just a little backset on this thing. And I know I'm going to have them from time to time. I realize that. But you're only getting 24 hours. And then you're going to be gone. I just back him up in the corner because I build it upon a rock. My faith is in Jesus. Amen. Verse number 26. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them shall be like, doeth them not, excuse me, shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And it came to pass when Jesus ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Let me tell you, I'm going to read some more scripture here in a little bit. I, I know this is different, but I'm going to follow the Lord. Last Sunday, amen, the Lord moved in such a powerful way uh, right here in our service. Man, after church was over with, we done turned all the cameras uh, loose uh, uh, off. There was no music playing. They lost all the music uh, that they had programmed, uh, amen, and this will blow a lot of Pentecostals' mind. Uh, you think you can't have healing unless you have the music. Amen, but something about the Holy Ghost I want everybody to understand. He brings his own band. Amen, you can have healing with or without. Amen, the music, you understand what I'm saying? Amen, the power of God moved in this place. Amen, people, if visitors started coming to be prayed for. Amen, members come up and want to be anointed. Amen, with all in the name of the Lord. There was one sister who's not been able to lift her hand any more than this right here for the last several days. She said, I throwed my shoulder out of place. Amen. We anointed her and prayed for her. At the end of the service, she said, look here, y'all. And she is doing this. So I ain't done this in days. I'm healed. My shoulder went back in place without a doctor or anybody putting it back in place. Amen. The sister's up there running the sound. Amen. She'd been coughing and coughing and coughing. I felt sorry for her the last two or three times that she came to church. She is all choked up and had this something 
in her throat. Amen. She came up and was anointed and prayed for her. After church, she come to me and said, guess what? Whatever that lump was, said, it's gone and I ain't coughing anymore. Said, I'm completely healed. Amen. Listen, the old saying, the proof is in the pudding. Amen. Listen, you can't get up. Amen. And, and testify to things like this. Amen. Unless it really happened. And I got the proof right here in house. Standing on the rock. And that rock is Jesus Christ. Amen. Don't tell me it doesn't pay to follow the Lord. Well, Brother Jimmy, I don't like to go to church. Amen. I call some hypocrites go to church. Yeah, but they go to Walmart, the doctor's office. They get gas. Amen. At the filling station. I saw some at Houchins buying groceries. And some went on vacation, took their clothes off at the beach, went out there in their panties and bra. Hey, man, you went to the beach with them. Shut your mouth. Hey, man, get up, get into the, get into the house of God where you belong. It won't hurt you to go to church with him. You go everywhere else with them. Hey, boy, I'm wound up like an eight-day clock today. If y'all get out there and visit and bring more people in here, I'd tear the pool pit down. What are y'all waiting on? Amen. Matthew 24, verse number four. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things shall come to pass, but the end is not yet. For a nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. That means different strange places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Honey, the beginning of sorrows is not coming. The beginning of sorrows is already here. Amen. We're right in the middle of it right now. Nation rising against nation. Kingdom against kingdoms. There's wars and rumors of wars. Uh, amen. I don't even like to look at the, uh, the internet or watch the news anymore. Amen. It's either North Korea or it's Russia or it's China or somebody's mad at President uh, Trump because he pumped gas somewhere they didn't think he ought to or some kind of something stupid. Uh, amen. There's some type of, of something going on everywhere. Hey, can't nobody get along with each other. Amen. The blacks don't like the whites and the whites don't like the blacks. Uh, amen. And they don't realize there's going to not be no color in heaven, amen, you're going to get it took care of down here or you ain't going to make it, Buster, amen, that's all there is to it, I ain't interested in the color of your skin, I got more black friends than I do white ones nowadays, I ain't turned the white ones against me, it's just my ministry's changing and it's reaching to people of other colors, I got all kinds of people from Pakistan that's my friends, I'm telling you the truth, amen, talk to them every week, you understand, I'm getting ready to go spend a week with some of them that was born and raised in Pakistan. Hey Amen, I blow people's mind. Hey Amen, why in the world would you go around the world and be with people that you don't know? Because we both got the same father. <laughs> Amen. We're both made, amen, by the same creator. Amen. The same one that blowed the, blowed the breath of life in their nostrils, blowed the breath of life in my nostrils. You understand what I'm saying? And when they skin their knee, their blood's going to be red just like mine. Now get over it. Amen. Grow up and learn, amen, that we got different people in this world. Amen. Everybody says, brighten the corner where you are. I'm going to brighten the whole world. I'm going to take my corner to their corner. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. I don't want to come over here and say, oh, now we all Baptist here. Or come over here and say, now we all Church of Christ. Or somebody will say, now we all Pentecostal. And somebody will say, well, we all Methodist. Somebody else says, well, we Presbyterian. I don't care if you're a Doberman Peter. As long as you, you've been born again by the Spirit and the power of God. Amen. I'm not interested. Uh, amen. Somebody all, somebody sent me an invitation today. Would you like to join our organization? Our organization is 104 years old. I said, yeah, but mine's 6 million. 
or 6,000. Amen. The organization, uh, amen, I came from, uh, amen, was first introduced to somebody by the name of Adam, amen, and all at once God created him a wife and he called her Eve. Gave up a rib in order, amen, to be able to, uh, to have her. And then later on, the Lord, uh, amen, came himself, uh, amen, and, and, and gave us the gospel uh, and paid for our sins and started the church. Verse number nine, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Amen. Somebody this morning in early service, I'm sorry you missed it, amen, was talking about the attacks that they received on their computer today. This person's 80-something years old and they're attacking her because she's spreading the gospel. Amen. Listen, if you're telling somebody, amen, you can put money in and love everybody and everything's going to be all right, amen, Amen, and entertains you, uh, amen, and you're not going to get uh, a fault against, uh, but you tell people you're going to have to repent, uh, get out of your bed, uh, hoard them, uh, amen, straighten up, uh, amen, and fly right, they're going to get mad at you. You tell your children you're going to have to get married, uh, amen, and quit shacking up, uh, amen, after you explain to them what shacking up means, uh, amen, uh, 30 years ago, everybody knew what shacking up means, and everybody now says, what are you talking about? We just live together. Hey Amen, they don't even know. They don't know right from wrong. Hey Amen, the Bible says in the last days they'll be calling good evil. Hey Amen, and evil good. Hey Amen, today if you're standing against anything that's wrong, hey Amen, they call you evil. If you're standing, hey Amen, against everything that's wrong, hey Amen, they call you good and passionate and tolerant and long-suffering, and we want you to be my friend. Hey Amen, but the real friend today, hey Amen, will guide you away from the mouth of hell uh, and point you to an old rugged cross, uh, amen, and tell you about a Savior uh, and tell you about a holy way to live uh, and a righteous way, uh, amen, to build your family and faith that you can have, uh, amen, in someone, uh, amen, that's able to make a difference in your life, uh, someone, uh, amen, that controls, uh, amen, the cancer cells in your body, uh, amen, someone, uh, amen, that controls the veins uh, in, in your, around your heart. Amen. That might be clogged. Amen. The devil comes every week and tries to find a reason to get me out of here. Somebody told me the other day, said, Brother Jimmy, it's one thing after another. Amen. To keep you from going to Portugal. I said, Yeah, there sure is. Amen. It's just one attack right after another. It's all happened just before I went on television. Amen. The attacks like that happened before I went on radio. Amen. Attacks went on. I started happening like that just before I went on internet radio. They go into 176 countries now. Over 100,000 uh, computers not counting. Uh, amen. How many telephones? Uh, amen. That's downloaded the free apps. Uh, amen. To where they can listen all the way around. Uh, amen. The world. Uh, I don't know what God's are doing, uh, but I know he's doing something. Uh, right here Wednesday night, uh, I brought out a whole lot of country cliches. Uh, amen. During the, the teaching, my wife was laughing. Uh, and on the way home, she said, uh, I don't know what them people in Japan uh, would think about your southern dialect here and hillbilly dialect. Uh, amen. When I got home, I looked on Facebook and sure enough, uh, amen, Japan checked in. Hey, amen. I don't know what they thought about it. Uh, amen. But they can figure it out. Amen. If John here from California can understand, uh, amen, anybody ought to be able to. <laughs> he says, sometimes I have a hard time understanding your analogies and stuff, but I finally figure them out. I said, hang around. We'll have a hillbilly made out of you for long. Amen. Jed and Granny and uh, Jethro and Ellie Mae all left. Amen. Kentucky and Virginia and went to California. He left California and went back to the sticks. Amen. We're got, he ain't got started eating possum yet, but we're working on him. I'm just teasing. I don't eat possum either. Verse number 10. <laughs> and then I shall many be offended and shall portray one another and shall hate one another. There's people today hating each other. They don't know why they hate each other. They just know I don't like you. I don't like no part about you. I don't like the way you talk. I don't like the way you look. I don't like the way you dress. Well, can I please ask why? I don't know. I just choose not to. It's kind of like an old boy. Amen. In Allen County a few years ago, uh, we met in the road. Uh, if you're a true country bumpkin, You'll meet in the road and roll the window down no matter how many people's come in and talk. It's just a Kentucky thing. 
And so we rolled our windows down there, blocking the road, just so happened nobody was coming. I said, how you doing? He said, fine. We talked on for just a minute. I said, I heard you got you a new preacher. He said, yeah, and I don't like him. I said, what is it you don't like about him? He said, I really don't know, but I don't like him. I know he wouldn't have when I got out of the car and started to the church the first time. That actually happened. Amen. People don't like me. They don't know why they don't like I just don't like them. No, I wasn't going to like them the first time that I seen them. Amen. Listen, sometimes we better find out what it is. If you don't like what the man of God's preaching, it may be because you're as guilty as homemade sin. Amen. And you might need to repent and get right with God. Amen. When you come into the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, if the preacher gets up and preaches all over you, be man enough to say, help me, Lord and go back, a limp back in the next service, uh, amen, with Band-Aids on, thinking, Lord, I'd like to kill me this morning, but I'll come back with some more. Amen. This sister, uh, one of my friends on Facebook, has been watching for a long time. She sent me a message yesterday and said, what time has service started? And I told her, sent her back a message. I said, 1030, and she said, I want it all. I said, good. She didn't want to be cut out of none of it. It's better here in person here too, isn't it, sister? Amen, it sure is. Amen. Look at verse number 11. And many false prophets shall arise and ask for $52 million for a... Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> My eyes got crossed. Many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Amen. In the last days, uh, this is what's going to happen just before, amen, the return of Christ. Uh, amen. Everybody's going to tell you a better way to make more money. Listen, folks, we don't need to know how to make more money. We, know to how, we need to know how to escape hell. Uh, we need to know how, uh, amen, listen, to be free uh, in the spirit to worship him. Uh, and we need to know how to get this spiritual high that Jack Daniel Daniels can't come up with it. Amen. Get this high. Amen. The crack and crank and marijuana can't give you the buzz that the Holy Ghost could give you. Amen. Listen, that's what we need to have. We need an outpouring of the Holy Ghost in the last days. Amen. You take the drug addicts. Amen. You take the people. Amen. They're soaked on alcohol and drugs. Amen. Out of the community. Amen. The houses will be vacant on both sides of the street in most every town. Whew. Amen, in the workforce today. You better be glad that the ones fixing your hamburger, amen, is sober enough to come in today. Amen, I talked to a manager of one of the big business places uh, in Bowling Green one day this last week. I said, how's it going since you've been promoted to manager? He said, oh, my goodness. He said, I got five employees called in today and they don't none of the five care whether they get fired or not. He said, I know exactly what you used to or used to or have been going through. I said, Welcome to the real world. Amen. He said, I interviewed this person, this person come in, I told them all that was required, and they looked at me and said, I think you've got a bad attitude. He said, Excuse me, I don't think I had an attitude. I was just telling you what's expected of you. I think I need to work somewhere else. I just don't like your attitude. Thanks for interviewing me. You have a good day, sir, and got it walked out. That's where we're at today. There's where we're at today. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, amen. Listen, the times has changed. Uh, amen. People's attitude. Uh, right's wrong and wrong's right. If uh, it's getting to the place today, if you walk in uh, and you say, you interested in a job? Yes, and let me give you the address to mail my check because I won't be here. And if I do show up, I'm going to tell you how to run the place because I think you're about half stupid. And after all, you may have been doing this for 15 years, but honey, I've been six months in this thing and I ain't nothing I don't know. Ooh, that's the attitude that we have. Many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Amen, families has got cold today. Amen, they don't hug each other like they used to. Amen, churches has got cold. They don't nobody laugh. They don't nobody smile. Amen, they look like a constipated mule when they walk, when they walk in the front doors. Amen, and they look like a constipated goat on the way out. Amen, they're not a bit happy. It don't matter what they do. Uh, amen. It don't matter what happens inside the house of God. Uh, they're the mis most miserable looking thing you ever see. Y'all to sit up here and look at some faces. Uh, Y'all just don't know. Uh, those of you that are sitting in front of your uh, coffee table at home, amen, you need to go to church. You don't know what you're missing. 
Amen, people today, uh, amen, listen, uh, people, uh, they just don't understand, uh, amen, uh, there's miserable, the love of many, uh, amen, has uh, uh, waxed cold, uh, amen, they don't, nobody like this, they don't like that, they don't like each other, uh, amen, they don't love one another, uh, amen, like they used to, used to, one person in a church gets sick, uh, amen, there would be a heaviness go over the entire congregation, uh, amen, it's a church mourned, uh, amen, for that person that's sick, uh, amen, and listen, when somebody's child got sick, you come in and say, pray for so-and-so's grandbaby. Amen, the church, you get up from the pews and the chairs, whichever they may have. Amen, they go down to the altar. They find a place on the step and they'd say, we'll come back and worship after a while, but I'm gonna pray for that baby right now. I'm gonna ask my heavenly father in the name of Jesus to come through. Amen, for that baby's need. Amen, in the church today, Amen, it's got cold and complacent. Amen, we can look at each other bug-eyed. Amen, come to church. Amen, mirrors bowl and leave uh, complacent. Amen, not wanting to get involved. Ooh. But the love of many has waxed cold. Amen. Years ago, we used to have an old time right hand of fellowship. Amen. Every time that you went to church. Amen. We used to have feet washings. Amen. One of the last times I had a feet washing, I made about half the congregation mad. Amen. They said, you should have told us we was going to have that. I said, why? So we could be prepared. I said, all you got to do is take your shoes off. How long does it take to get your blessed socks off? Who ever heard of such a thing? You don't have to color your toenails in order to go to a feet washing. Amen. We used to have, and occasionally we still do. We ain't had one in a little while, but it's getting time again. Amen. Well, listen, we have feet washings. Amen. We be uh, slinging snot and shouting water, turning over pans, dancing all over the front of the church, running and hugging each other. Amen. The young boys that go to grandpa and wash his feet and grandpa gets a happy, he'd shake. Amen. All all over the church pew, uh, under the joy of the Lord. Uh, amen, listen, folks, you don't have much jerking, uh, amen, and shaking, uh, amen, under the spirit, uh, and much dancing anymore, amen, in the house of God. We become stiff, neck, and cold, uh, amen. We want to be proper, uh, amen. We want to be, uh, amen, politically correct. Uh, we want to be respectable, uh, amen, for the house of God. If you want to be respectable, if Jesus set you free, you ought to run three laps, or laps around this place shouting, uh, amen, that's respectable, giving honor to God because he's your deliverer. Amen. Now, amen, today in America, amen, the big part of the churches, uh, amen, what they need, uh, amen, is to send them training, uh, amen, to be undertakers because they, they can spend every service and bombing each other. That's how dead they are. I'm kind of like an old country preacher friend of mine. Amen. Went out west years ago. He's preaching revival. Amen. The second or third night of revival, he told the congregation, he said, you, y'all are hard to preach to. You don't need a revival. What y'all need is a resurrection in this place. He said, it's like preaching to a funeral. Oh, we got quiet in here. Does that resemble some of you? Amen. If... <laughs> If it does, don't you get mad and leave. Amen. Get to the altar and get it corrected. <laughs> Woo. The love of many is, uh, has waxed cold. Uh, amen. Down through the years. Uh, amen. Verse 13 says, But he that in shall endure unto the end, uh, the same shall be saved. Uh, not the one that gives up. Not the one that's puffed up. Uh, and decide I'm going to find me another church and another preacher. I'm going to find a place where they don't get so personal uh, and they don't get so intimate with me. Uh, I just don't like to be hugged on. Uh, amen. It's probably because you got a heart problem. I'm not talking about uh, needing no open heart surgery. I'm talking about you need to be born again of the spirit and the power of God. Amen, the love of Jesus. Uh, amen, all to flow through you. <coughs> amen. Praise the Lord. A few years ago, there was a pastor I met up in Indiana while I was holding revival. He come up to me and said, Brother Jimmy, I'd like for you to come hold revival in my church sometime. I said, all right, brother, just give me a call. He was a nice guy. He's done gone on to be with the Lord. We became good friends later uh, after that. And about a month later, he called me and said, Brother Jimmy, can you come in, I think, October or sometime or another and hold a revival? I said, which week? And I looked at my calendar. And I said, I'm free. I'll come to Indiana and hold
hold a revival. He said, I don't know how much money we get can get for you. I said, brother, it don't matter whether you get any money or not. I'll come preach the gospel. He said, I want you to come and spend a week with me and my wife in my home. And I thought, ooh. Wow. It's all right to go to a motel, but just move in with somebody you don't know. I got up there, and there's the friendliest people you've ever seen in your life. Come to find out his wife came from Kentucky, and she would cook. She could cook. I got to have some hillbilly cooking up in Indiana. Amen. And there's some of them up there can cook too because some of them had a dinner and brought in some food. I'm not saying nothing against the people in Indiana, but they just ain't nothing like Kentucky cooking. I wouldn't look like I look if I was born in some other state. Amen. My mama could take a, a tablespoon full of lard and make anything taste good. He <laughs> what he was. Amen. You understand? All right, verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Amen. We're getting closer to the end all the time. Well, Brother Jimmy, why do you push trying to reach a multitude? You can spare the end. I don't want to spare the end. I want to push it forward and say, Lord Jesus, come today no later than tomorrow because I'm seeing them drop out of church amen, like flies are dying amen, because of the temptations of the flesh. Help me, Lord, to get this gospel out so that you can end this thing up, amen, before we lose anymore. Amen. Those that it shall endure unto the end, uh, the same shall be saved. I'm going to say this. I'm going to quit in just a minute. Uh, the statistic shows, and in a book by uh, Carolyn and uh, Paul Wilde of uh, Foley, Alabama, uh, in the book uh, called uh, Smitten Shepherds. And I've got two copies. I've got their first copy, their second copy. They've got me mentioned in it um, because they come acquainted with me and put me in there. But anyway, um, they're down in Foley, Alabama, and they looked up the statistics there's uh, 150 uh, preachers, I think it is, uh, or no, 1,500, 15, 1,500 preachers per month worldwide that are resigning from the pulpit because of the gospel. People are getting mad. People are rebellious. Amen. Because of false teachings. Amen. Coming. Amen. From television. False teachings are coming from around the world and it's causing the people that attend church. Amen. To get disgruntled. Amen. To get mad. Amen. Over things that they ought not to get mad over. To get upset over things. Amen. That they ought to be thankful for. But their mind has been twisted. Amen. Through false teachings. Amen. They think the enemy is somebody that preaches hard, tells you the truth. Amen. That's blunt. Amen. They ain't nobody no blunder than Elijah, John the Baptist, and Jesus Christ. Amen. Even Apostle Paul was very, very blunt. Amen. He'd shout one minute and take your hide off the next. Amen. Jesus would put somebody's ear on one minute and say, get behind me, Satan. Amen. Look him in the face the next time that you saw him. Amen. There's more than one part. Amen. Of the gospel. You can't shake, rattle, and roll every time you come to the house of God. You're going to have to have one Sunday. Amen. Every now and then to go to the altar. And get your carburetor adjusted. Hey man, get spit shined. Hey man, get to your place where your valves get ground. Oh, brother Jimmy, is it coming? Yeah, it is. Hang on. A year ago, I had this lawnmower that I had for years, and it got to where that thing I couldn't hardly start it. It just whoop, whoop. And sometimes I'd have to put my foot on the, uh, the brake because of the safety mechanism, put booster cables on it, and take my hand and help spin that motor around. I said, I can't understand why that thing is so hard to start. So I had this guy that's real good working on lawnmowers come out here and pick up a couple mowers at the church, and or actually all three of them, and go work on it. And I put that one on the trailer. I said, see if you can figure out what's wrong with that thing. He come back and said, there ain't nothing wrong with that one. He said, all I done is adjusted the valve. I said, look here. He turned it off. I said, ain't that something? You mean I've been worrying over this thing, putting booster cables on it for the last three years, uh, trying to help that thing get started when all it does had the valves adjusted? He said, that's all's wrong with it. And I said, boy, that'll preach. 
Uh, I know some people that need their vows adjusted. Amen. The reason why you can't stay in church and you can't stay faithful, amen, you get locked up every time the preacher touches you. You got to have somebody to turn your motor over. Somebody got to call you and remind you what time church started and remind you this is Sunday. Mm-hmm. Had somebody a few years ago tell me, said, I'm sorry, I said, I missed church. I said, what happened to you? I forgot it was Sunday. I thought, boy, I've heard all kinds of excuses, but I think I'll have to write that down somewhere. Amen. Psalms 119, verse 11. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord. Teach me thy statutes. Not teach me to read the back of my eyelids. Don't teach me how to run a remote control. Don't teach me how to surf channels. Don't teach me how to get me a Facebook account. But Lord, teach me your word. Let your statutes be in my heart. Let me think like you, that I will not sin against God. Help me, Lord, tonight, and those of you watching by live streaming, pass the word around. Amen. We're going to have a teaching out of Ephesians 5, verse 21, about marriage, about the home. It's very, very very needed, and it's needed inside the church. I want to uh, encourage you to watch my live streaming or show up here tonight. Well, but Jimmy, how many of you think that will? Not very many because most people ain't interested. Boy, you just plain smart at it. I said, no, I ain't. I got a pair of glasses. Y'all see them glasses? I'm not a smart at it. I just told you I had glasses. I'm just telling you the truth. If you ain't interested, you ain't interested. Now, how many today think that you'd do good if you opened up a brand new store on the square in Glasgow and you were going to sell spindles for a buggy, horse buggy? Other than a few in the Mennonite community, your business is going to be pretty bad. I don't think you'll ever get the rent paid. What are you trying to say? If you're, try if you're trying to sell something nobody wants, you can have a whole lot of it and have it cheap. Amen, that's the way it is for the gospel. You can put her out all around the world and it be free, but they ain't what they want. They won't come and get it. Tonight, there'll be many of you will be getting a ball game instead of coming here to learn. Well, I already know about living right and going to church and being good to my wife and my husband. No, you don't. You just think you do. There's things that you need, things that you need to hear. We need to be reminded. Our marriage needs to be refreshed. Every now and then, you and I'm getting into this night, you and your wife needs to go on a honeymoon to McDonald's. I throw that in there because the first thing you's going to try to tell me is we can't afford it, so I fixed it where you could. Get you a dollar menu. Amen. <laughs> Get you a dollar menu. I've been in this thing long enough. I can think about as fast as some of y'all can. <laughs> See you tonight, amen, at 6 o'clock. And those of you live streaming, 645, get you a chair, a glass of sweet tea if you can't be here, amen. Get your Bible out, get you a handkerchief, and have a place to where you can make a reckoning with God. And we'll learn what the Word says, amen, so that when you stand before God, amen, you'll be able to endure the judgment, amen, and have a sweeter better running life. I'm going to say this and I'm going to quit. My dad many years ago used to like to tinker with clocks. Now he didn't tinker with clocks for a living. He just had two or three he tinkered with. He kept some three in one all. One for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Ghost and they're all in the same can. Oh boy, that'll preach. Amen. He got that three in one all out and Pull that little red stem out, get up and go click, 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 click. And that clock is up and go. And heat all a little bit over here. He kept that thing. Oh, it sounds so pretty. I got it sitting right now at home. It ain't hitting a lick because I don't, I don't know how to adjust them. And I ain't old it in years. Oh, boy, that'll preach. 
I know a whole lot of mantelpieces <laughs> that's sitting around the church. They ain't been old in years. Understand what I'm saying? They ain't been old in years. And you're just sitting there and like a dud on the 4th of July. A little bit of smoke, but ain't no pop. I better hush while I'm still ahead. Amen. If you need a touch from the Lord, come today. Don't be deceived into thinking I'm all right. The devil tells you that you're all right. But does the Lord tell you that you're all right? Does his spirit let you know that you're all right? Amen. If you feel clean, amen, then you're all right. If I made your dander rise up, it's not because I'm a bad preacher. It's because you're a bad listener. Should have done been up here praying before I got done. I'll put the blame where the blame goes. Amen. I don't hold an empty can in front of my clock. Amen. I want the three and one to go on you. I've all you today. Now let's see if you can tick. Let's see if you can talk. And let's see if you can bring somebody with you to church tonight. Let's see if you can show up next Sunday with a carload. Let's stand together. God bless you, those watching by TV, by radio, and by live streaming. Be sure to share this on live streaming and come back and be with us.